What's going on, everybody? Uh, this is Chad, your speech professor. Um, I've had you watch a couple of videos, but those were a little bit older. This is me right now speaking to you as of June 11th, 1046 p.m. I uh, just wanted to encourage each one of you and say that um, you're doing great. Reflection papers have been good. Um, you're going to take notes and kind of reflect on each of these lectures as well. Uh, and listen, those are pretty important uh, for me because, uh, you know, I want to know that you're listening uh, to what, you know, what I'm trying to teach you and that you're thinking about it, right? And so this idea of reflecting on things and trying to figure out what you feel about it, what you think about it, it's really, really, really important. And uh, listen, I'm under no illusion that uh, any of you is... Um, really excited about speech. There's a stigma, you know, um, that comes with speech class and, you know, it's just a waste of time. It's a class we have to do. But listen, I want to remind you that communication is supreme. If you've ever been in a relationship, uh, romantic or otherwise, or a friendship or any kind of situation where it's you, you know, and, um, you and another person, you understand how valuable communication is. So ultimately, we're not even really looking at just speech here. What we're really looking at is how to communicate with people, you know, and uh, I think you've probably heard me say before, or maybe not, I don't remember if it's been in the videos yet, but the first thing we have to do is understand that the supreme reason for communicating is that whoever we're communicating with understands us, you know? And so we have to figure out a way, well, two, two things. We, we want to be understood and we want the person we're communicating with to feel valued and loved and cared for enough uh, to listen to what we're saying, right? And you're going to hear me say that a lot over the next three weeks. I'm going to talk about loving people and kindness and within the art of communication, because it's so important um, when you're speaking to somebody, you know, uh, if they feel like you care about them, if they feel like you have their best interest in mind, or even if you're credible, if you feel like a trustworthy person to them, you know, uh, they're much more likely uh, to listen to you, right? So, I want you to kind of shift your perspective a little bit from, you know, um, speech in the sense of, in the sense of like, we're not talking necessarily about getting in front of large crowds of people. Okay. I'm not really interested in that because a lot of you will, will never be in that situation. I'm more interested in communication with small groups of people, family, friends, coworkers, couple of bosses you have at work, um, you know, small groups of people you're trying to convince of something, small groups of people you're trying to teach something. Some of you want to be teachers. Others of you want to be nurses. You know, teachers are going to have a classroom. Nurses are going to have families, businessmen and businesswomen. You're going to have uh, people you're trying to sell things to, products you're trying to sell, ideas you're trying to pitch. So, uh, and then all of us, we have friendships and, and romantic relationships and we want these relationships to be healthy, right? And so that's where communication comes in and uh, that's what we're talking about this summer. And so I'm not here to bore you, I'm not here to give you unnecessary work, though I bet the first week felt like that. Uh, we're not going to do much more of what we did the first week as far as all of those papers, um, you know, uh, those, you know, assignments we had to read and stuff of that nature. We're going to be practicing. You're going to be making a lot of videos. I'm going to ask you to do some interesting things, some things that might make you a little uncomfortable. But my goal is, um, is to position you to be the best version of yourself, right? That's what I want to do. And I want to teach you how to use your voice, how to use your ideas, how to use your opinions, your thoughts. I want you to, to leverage those things to work for you and whatever career 
you uh, you hope to do. And so uh, the number one thing, the most important thing is that we speak to be understood. And so that needs to be our main thought that probably sounds simple enough. And some of you are probably going, well, duh, but listen, how often do you know somebody, maybe it's a boss or maybe it's a significant other and or a friend or, or even a professor, somebody's talking, but you don't know what the hell they're saying, right? It's not that you don't understand the words. It's just that nothing really makes sense. Their speech isn't organized. What they're saying isn't really a straight line of thoughts or they're not speaking really clearly or they're not making sense, right? And so I think, you know, the first thought that we move into any kind of speech with is like, how can I communicate this idea, this thing that I'm feeling in a way that I'm going to be understood? And I think I think if we're really honest, a lot of times when we communicate with people, we're really we're not really considering who we're talking to. You know, we have something we want to say. And so, so I think if a lot of us were honest, most of our communication has more to do with us than it does with us wanting to be understood. All right. And I want you to be, you got to be honest with yourself in this class, right? Because, you know, uh, I think a good a level of self awareness, which, you know, I'm having you do the reflections for that reason. So listen, you're going to be here for the next three weeks. I'm having you to do, I'm having you do a lot of shit, you know, so why not take advantage of each assignment, be self-reflective, be self-aware and try to become a better version of yourself throughout this process. And ultimately we want to become better communicators because we want people to understand us. And so keep that in mind, when you open your mouth to speak, consider your audience. Who are you speaking to? Do you need to shift the way you're speaking uh, in order for them to understand you? The number two thing, like I said a minute ago, we have to love people deeply. If you don't love people, if you're speaking with anger, if you're speaking with frustration, if you're speaking from a place where somebody doesn't feel safe, um, People aren't going to hear you, but when people feel like you care about them, they listen and they open themselves up. And so make sure you're being understood and make sure that the person you're speaking to knows you care about them. Even if it's a stranger, you know, there are simple little things with our body language we can do that show people they're safe. You know, a smile, not crossing your arms. We're going to go over body language a little bit later. Uh, but just create a safe space for people, uh, you know, to receive what it is you want them uh, to know. And this goes for presentations all the way down to if you're just checking out at Walmart and you're talking to the cashier. You know, you want to speak life into people. You want to make sure that your words, your speech leaves people better than before that speech. You don't ever want to speak life from people. You want to speak life into people. And so what we're going to be talking about this uh, beginning of the week two here is being a good storyteller. All right. So I think most of us understand, you know, what a story is, but I'll bet you if I asked uh, for each one of you to tell me, hey, you know, in one one sentence, what is a story? My guess would be that nobody would be able to, when just one sentence, would be able to pinpoint exactly what a story is. I'm not saying you don't understand what a story is, but what I'm saying is I don't think many of us know quickly how to describe specifically what a story is and how we can leverage the power of story when we're speaking. Uh, listen, there's a reason why movie theaters are all over the world, right? And, you know, we, we pay 12, 15 bucks just for a ticket. And then we pay seven, eight, nine dollars for popcorn and seven dollars for a drink. You know, a trip to the movies is 50, 60 bucks. And most people enjoy that. I mean, I, I love going to the movies. Uh, other than that, we've got Netflix subscriptions. And Netflix has been going up, I think, God, like every year for the last five, six years. It's like 20 bucks a month now. You got Hulu, you know, you got Amazon Prime, and you got Stars, HBO, HBO Max, HBO East, HBO West, like all of these different channels that are featuring movies. All of these are stories. Every television show we watch is a story, 
all right? Every video game you play, if you play video games, that's a story. Every book you read is a story. Um, you know, if I were to go through your text messages, most of them are just you and somebody else sharing stories, right? Uh, this isn't really surprising. You know, entertainment five, six, seven thousand years ago was simply that. It was people telling stories. Before the invention of writing, when language was just sound, that's what people did. They sat around and they told stories to each other, you know? And so story is literally everywhere. And I don't even have to teach you how to tell a story necessarily without you kind of subconsciously knowing. Um, a lot of you do this already. You tell the story of something that happened today. You tell the story of your day. You tell the story of a, a heartbreak you went through or a difficult moment. Mm, humans are natural storytellers, right? We, we naturally gravitate towards story and we are absolutely entertained by story and story grips our attention and, you know, we're almost helpless against um, the power of story, you know? So how can we, how can we leverage that? How can we leverage the power of story to our benefit, right? And when I say our benefit, remember the main goal of communicating is that people understand it. So how can we leverage story so that people will better understand what we're saying and be affected by what we're saying, right? Because the number two thing, remember, is that people will feel loved and cared for and seen and heard by the words that we're using. So how can we leverage story in order to make people feel cared for, seen, heard, um, you know, less alone? And so you may be saying, you know, Professor Matthews, what about if I'm telling a story, trying to get a raise? Well, listen, even if you can make your boss feel like he is valuable on this personal level, uh, you, you've kind of won him over. However, I think there's a third thing where we can use story as persuasion, right? And so uh, many of you have heard of ethos, pathos, logos. These are Greek modes of persuasion, um, basically just ways that people are persuaded. Uh, ethos is ethics, so credibility. So that kind of you know, the persuasive credibility would be like, hey, listen to me because I have a PhD in communication and English. So I know what I'm talking about, right? That would be me using uh, credibility as persuasion. The second one is pathos, pathos, um, you know, pity, passion, emotion, story, not necessarily story, but emotion, but can be story in there. Like we move somebody with emotion. And the third one is uh, logos and that's logic. It just makes sense. So we're persuading somebody with making sense. But there's kind of a fourth one, and uh, it's narrative. And narrative is the art of storytelling. And um, so how can we utilize narrative to persuade people? So I'm going to throw that third one in. So we got three things that we're really trying to focus on this week. Number one, we're speaking to be understood. Number two, we're speaking to speak love, kindness, and we want to make people feel heard and seen and loved and valued. And the third one, in specific situations, in certain situations, we might be telling a story to persuade, speaking to persuade. And when I say persuasion, I don't mean negative persuasion. I mean, you know, uh, you could be in a situation where you're talking to a friend who's struggling and you're trying to speak life back into them, you know, saying, hey, you're a great mother. You're a fantastic friend. You're very successful. Sometimes when we're encouraging people, what we're really doing is trying to persuade them to see themselves the way that, that we see them. And so persuasion can be used as a really effective, positive, powerful tool. All right. So how do we how do we utilize story? That's what we're going to really focus on. The type of speaking this week is how do we utilize a story? What the hell is a story? All right. So a story is very, very simple. All right. You got a character. My pen here is going to be the character. We have a character. All right. Every story begins and ends with a character. Does that character have to be human? Uh, Disney, Pixar, all of these wonderful animated cartoons and shows, they, you know, sometimes the character is a toaster oven or, you know, a trash compost or, 
you know, Wally, uh, excellent animated film, and uh, the, the main character is a trash compost, I think. So, but it was a trash compost personified, right? So that it's a trash compost that has human feelings. So it doesn't matter if the human is character or not, or a human rather, it doesn't matter if the character is human or not, only that it has human feelings and characteristics. So every story has a character, which when you're telling stories, most of the time, you're the character, right? You're telling your story, so you're the character. So every story is about a character that wants something, all right? What does the character want? Think about some of the movies you've watched. Think about a romantic comedy. What does the main character want? To fall in love and live happily ever after. Think about um, a cop movie, you know? What is the, you know, cops and robbers type vibe of a movie? What is the What do the good guys want? They want peace and to catch the bad guy, but ultimately they want to create safety, right? Think about uh, superhero movies. They want world peace. They want to. They want to. They, they want peace. They want tranquility. They want safety for people. Think about a coming of age movie. Uh, a lot of this is internal. You're right. So the main character just wants to feel okay. Wants to feel me mentally healthy. So what the character wants is what drives the character through the story, right? And so we are talking about story. A story is about a character that wants something but has to overcome something to get what they want, all right? So the, the story is about what the character does to overcome whatever it is in the way of what they want, right? So think about this in terms of you right now, all right? So let's think about in terms of this class. So you're taking this class, there's levels of this, right? So you're the character, you, 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 and you, all of you are the characters, right? Ultimately, in this class specifically, you want to get an A or you want to get a B or you want to pass. What do you have to overcome in order to get that? We well, have to overcome, you know, doing all the schoolwork and make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to do it. Make sure you understand what you're doing. It, But ultimately, you're sacrificing time and energy because uh, I noticed a lot of you were non-traditional students, you know, in your 20s and 30s. So you're... You've got other shit to do. You've got kids. You've got jobs. You've got careers. You've got husbands and wives. Like So this is an actual sacrifice. Sitting here listening to me talk is a sacrifice for you, right? And so for you, you're having to sacrifice time. You have to overcome the time sacrifice to get what you want, which is an A, right? And that's hard. But what happens? How do these characters get through the hard thing. They keep their eyes focused on the prize. And that, that's the A, that's the B, that's passing the class. So uh, a character, a story rather, sorry, it's late. It's 11.04. So a story is about a character that wants something, but must overcome something to get it. Listen, when you start telling a story, when you start being vulnerable and open, and you are talking about you and something that you ha had to overcome, People immediately start listening. People are drawn to vulnerability. And I know that's hard for some of you. I feel like I've dated lots of women who had a hard time with vulnerability, you know. Uh, and so that's a whole other story that we'll tell later. Um, so, but we're talking about being open and vulnerable. And so this idea of vulnerability means that we're basically opening ourselves up. We're exposing the deepest, truest nature of who we are. And that can can be scary, but every good story requires a vulnerable main character because that's how all the other characters and the people watching the story or reading the story, that's how we connect with that character. We see them as they truly are. We see their darkest, you know, uh, secrets. And listen, I'm not going to ask you to, to reveal anything about yourself here. Uh, you know, there's different spaces, right, that are that are appropriate for how open that you want to be, uh, and 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 I know you can gauge those depending on where you are and what kind of what kind of conversation you're having, what kind of communication you're having, you know, and so, um, but I want you to think about this idea of story. I want you to think about your life in terms of a story, and so what I'm going to have you do this week is I'm going to have you tell a story. All right, I'm going to have you tell a story something personal and it can be, you know, you don't have to, uh, 
You don't have to speak about anything that triggers you in any way, shape, or form. But I want to encourage you to tell a short story about a time you had to overcome something difficult and what you did to overcome it and what made you want to overcome that thing. All right. So let's just, let's use an example. Uh, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. So right now, uh, my mother, uh, who is only 17 years older than I am, you know, she had me when she was a baby, basically, you know, so we grew up kind of together, you know, and so she's young and she was recently diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And if you know much about ovarian cancer, um, it's pretty difficult to diagnose before it's in the later stages. And so my mother lost a lot of weight, you know, uh, like 60, 70 pounds in six or seven months. And, uh, she found out on April, April 3rd of this year. And I remember because I was, um, doing a lecture video, much like this one. And, uh, I got a phone call from my father, you know, basically t telling me, you know, Hey, don't freak out, but your mom's being flown to, uh, Baylor Baptist, I think in, in Dallas, you know, by helicopter. And so of course I'm, I'm a pretty chill guy, but it's my mother. Right. And she's one of my best friends. So I'm freaking out, you know, and I'm, I'm just kind of panicking and, and anxious and, um, I don't know anything. I don't even know at that time why she's being flown there, or what's going on. Uh, and I end up getting in my car and I, I was in Little Rock at the time and I drove five hours and uh, got there, found out, you know, a lung had collapsed and uh, that she had ovarian cancer and that it, it, you know, looked like it had spread some other places. And so, you know, I'm a, I've always been a guy who can, I, I'm pretty good with my emotions. I can, I can deal with them. I can express them. Hell, I write poetry for a living and I teach literature is mainly what I teach, um, and, and writing, uh, but also teach, you know, communication as well. And so I've always been really good at navigating my emotions. I've always been really good at knowing what I'm feeling, but I remember walking out of the hospital, you know, my mom in that hospital bed and, you know, and I couldn't really I didn't understand what I was feeling or what I was thinking. You know, I had all these images of life without my mother. Wasn't sure how to deal with those. Didn't, couldn't even really fathom what that would feel like. And I'm, I'm sure there's some of you who have lost a parent or somebody very, very close to you. Um, I've lost some people, but never my, you know, never anybody as close as my mother. And so for the next couple of weeks, I was just kind of in this daze, right? And so I had to spend a lot of time praying and, you know, I, I made this effort to really spend more time with my mother to reconnect with her. We've always been connected, but, you know, for the past couple of years, I've been busy and I've just been kind of living my life and, uh, you know, she's been living hers. And so, um, you know, by making more of an effort, you know, asking her to lunch three or four days a week after she got out of the hospital and started chemo and uh, writing letters back and forth. And we had this notebook that we share and that helped. And, you know, going on long walks where I could just sort of digest what I was feeling and maybe, you know, keep a journal and write those things down and meditating and prayer. I mean, there were all these little things that I did to kind of take steps to to take care of myself, you know. Um, but it's a process, right? And so I'm still in that process. And I think, I think, uh, I think it'll be a process until, you know, something happens, right? Until she gets the, the no cancer sign. And so, um, what I just did there is a true story and it's an example of a story, right? And my assumption is that most of you were pretty attentive in that moment. Uh, cause I'm being honest, right? I'm opening myself up and it, it's scary to do that sometimes. Right. Uh, and so I was the main character there. <coughs> um, my mother has cancer is the, is the problem. Now, you know, you notice at the end that my mom has not been healed of cancer. So that's not necessarily in the story what I wanted. What I wanted was to come to terms with what I was feeling. Now, there's another type of story where I definitely want my mom to overcome cancer. And I'm not saying I don't want her to overcome cancer. But in this specific story, it's about me. It's not about my mother, right? I'm telling a story about me coming to terms with 
uh, the fact that my mother has a potentially terminal cancer. So I'm telling you about, you know, how I worked through it where I'm at now, you know, um, and, and, and you, you kind of got this idea based on what I told you that, that the end goal for me was just to come to terms with and be okay with. And so that's an example of a story and they are powerful, powerful ways to influence people, to speak life into people and to uh, really persuade people of some really good, positive things. Now, on the flip side of that, you know, um, I, uh, you know, every morning I send my mom a nice text in, in the morning, uh, kind of a long text, just, you know, being her hype man and pumping her up and sending her some little scriptures here and there. And so that's me speaking life into her, right? Uh, sometimes we'll meet with certain nurses or doctors, and some of them are really encouraging and and, and, and really uh, they make me feel like they care and some, some don't care. Some are too busy, right? So, uh, be aware of what you're saying, how you're saying it. But for this week specifically, I want you to think about how you could leverage the power of story to influence other people, to persuade people. So in my story, my, the thing I want to persuade people of the end goal essentially is no matter how difficult life becomes, no matter how, goodness, how much sorrow you may feel, there are things you can do to take care of yourself. There are things you can do to be okay. So ultimately, I want you to think about a story you can tell about a time you had to overcome something different, something difficult rather, not different, and what you had to do to overcome it and what ultimately was pulling you through that difficult moment you know what did you want what were you motivated by to that helped you get through that difficult moment so listen uh we're gonna be moving really quick uh i've been trying to take some notes on uh your your papers but you know uh goodness you know these these summer classes especially a summer flex class you know, we're basically doing a week of work, you know, uh, three times, three times a week. So you're doing three weeks of work, excuse me, three weeks of work every week. So we're, we're rushing through it. Don't get discouraged. Uh, take this opportunity to really grow as a communicator. You're going to hear me repeat myself a lot. And the reason for that is, is because it's really, really, really important that you speak to be understood that you create spaces where people feel loved and seen and valued and that you understand that your speech has power and, and is persuasive, right? So those are the three really, really important things we're going to really jump on this week. Uh, if you need me, uh, I'm an email away. I answer email quite often. Um, and so uh, keep up the good work. Uh, proud of each one of you. And uh, you're going to kick ass. You're already one week at, down. We're, we're one fourth the way there. Um, nobody submitted anything that made me think, oh my God, you know, I do get some of that sometimes though. All right. So uh, I appreciate each one of you. Uh, I'm here to serve you, here to help you in any way that I can. And so uh, you let me know if there's anything I can do for you. So it is 1115. I hope that you're having a good weekend and uh, I'm signing off.